uh, then uh, like um, yesterday we had an introduction uh, uh, like introduction on psychology as we we need to have a uh, base on psychology even though we are in counseling or you are uh, in a depth uh, learning of counseling but still we need to have psychology what is psychology how to understand about a human being okay the different types of uh, um, uh, psychology we were uh, uh, we had uh, like we looked into like uh, uh, forensic psychology clinical psychology abnormal psychology all those things okay so yesterday that was an introduction part today we are moving to the next uh, block it is block number three um, it is mainly about uh, the uh, abnormality abnormal psychology abnormal psychology okay so you might be uh, thinking that i know that many of you might have uh, much experience in the field of counseling or you may be involved it might be involved in uh, counseling sessions okay um, and um, moreover uh, like even though we are involved in counseling sessions but to know some some uh, what of uh, uh, theoretical aspect it is uh, good that you can understand some of the conditions about the human being isn't it okay so that is what abnormal psychology tells us that uh, sometimes a human being may be due to some environment situation or due to some of the influences or persuasion of some other uh, uh, as a multidimensional aspect the person may uh, be away a little bit of uh, normal okay uh, naturally human being uh, uh, you can say that every each and every individual uh, come across, comes across many difficulties uh, many um, uh, many obstacles many hurdles in the life situations okay um, like um, some uh, since the stages of development we know that there are different stages of development okay so but in, uh, in many situations the human being is able to overcome the situation or uh, overcome the hurdles that come across or he is able to balance the situation okay but sometimes what happens it does not under the control of the human being maybe the person is not able to undergo that situation in a better way so that becomes Uh, uh, sometimes extreme or uh, it is not under the control of the person so that we can say that okay little bit he has a difficulty he is a little bit away from the normal and so that is why we say that these persons are abnormal and, and as a, a student of counseling it is important that you have you must understand about the abnormal psychology also okay so uh, from the very in, it's, it's a simple term we can say that abnormal uh, Uh, abnormal psychology abnormal means it is away from normal okay normal means you are able to cope up with the situations you are competent in many things you are uh, uh, you can understand uh, um, uh, the uh, whatever uh, like uh, there are some characteristics also in your uh, book about the normal conditions okay like uh, balance of psychic forces uh, self actualization resistance to stress Uh, autonomy, competence, perception of reality. We uh, the people, th those who find okay, uh, they can understand. Or uh, whatever the thing is, like they can, uh, they can balance. They have an equilibrium uh, between the forces. Okay, but sometimes, as I said, sometimes we a little bit shirk away from the normal, and that becomes abnormal, and that is not under the control of the human being, and that becomes abnormal, abnormal, and so abnormality or abnormal psychology. As a student of counseling, it is very uh, important. Important that you must understand about the nature of the human being. Okay, when you start discussing with the person or or our client, we can tell, we can say that a person who approaches for a help uh, to a counselor, he is called a client. Okay, and uh, the client uh, um, uh, the client may have different uh, situations. Okay, sometimes the client may be away from the uh, away from any orientation, or he may, he may not may have any insight about the about the person or about the conditions or About the environment, so in those that cases, you may have to refer to a expert, or you may have to find out some of the uh, ways and means to help that person to come out of that difficulty. Okay, and that uh, becomes the role of a counselor there. Okay. so it is uh, important that we must have some understanding about the psychology of a person um, and that is why this abnormal psychology tells about the different uh, uh, mental illnesses or certain psychiatric illnesses how to identify a person with such a situation Uh, okay, and I know that uh, this counseling field is, as you all know, that the counseling field is a vast field. Um, uh, the counsel, uh, this counseling session, may, uh, counseling can be uh, undertaken in any of the field, like schools, colleges, institutions, hospitals, medical settings, 
correctional settings, geriatric homes, uh, special schools, etc., etc. So here, everywhere, we see different types of people. And uh, yesterday, as I said, each individual is unique, and we have to understand about the psychology of each and every individual. And when the person is not able to have in a proper balance, we help them to come out of that situation. Okay, so this abnormal psychology also you are there to help the people, those who are not in normal. Okay, and this text tells about the different disorders, uh, about the different psychiatric illness or some of the disorders um, uh, that can affect the human being. Okay, and here, uh, uh, as a, as a, as a, there's a classification of mental disorders. There's a classification of mental disorders. Um, uh, it is like uh, American Psychiatric Association and WHO has developed different classifications and um, the, uh, the manual which is uh, developed by the American Psychiatric Association is called DSM that you must be aware of DSM it is called DSM where it is a manual where all the details about each of the symptoms about each of psychiatric illnesses mentioned and according to that manual manual the psychiatrist found, found find out uh, the or diagnose the uh, situations or the illness related to that particular individual and that is the, the um, manual developed by American Psychiatric Association is called DSM and at present uh, in 2022 uh, DSM 5 was introduced with TSM little bit of uh, uh, revision revised uh, revised text to revised uh, DSM and that includes different aspects of mental illness in the same way there's another classification by WHO, World Health Organization, they have developed ICD, ICD. Okay, uh, so these two classification mentions about the different, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, like uh, different um, uh, uh, situations, different symptoms, that uh, the diagnostic part or the treatment method uh, about the psychiatric illness. And ICD means it is international classification of diseases. So apart from America, uh, uh, the country of America, others use ICD. And now we have ICD-11. That was ICD last. It was ICD-10. Now it is ICD-11. And that is a manual where um, in the rest of the uh, part of uh, like uh, apart from uh, American uh, uh, USA, others use uh, WHO's ICD and this gives us different manual and uh, you know, we can find out different chapters are there for each of the uh, um, illness. There's a, a separate uh, the classification and different, uh, even though if it is mental retardation, suppose you take uh, a, an illness of mental retardation, it is classified into different uh, chapters and that uh, it will help uh, um, psychiatrist to uh, uh, find out the symptoms or to recognize uh, or to diagnose what the particular issue is with that particular person okay and so that is what the classification of mental illness is okay so here the, the most uh, See, it's a war, very vast area. Abdominal psychology is a very, very vast area. And as it was given the instructions to you that it is uh, the learner who has to go through the text and every time. See, we must be have, we must have updations. We must have updations about the um, our uh, what, uh, like about the theoretical aspect, the updates, concepts, new learnings, etc., new researches. That all depends upon the learner. How the learner shows interest in uh, updating the knowledge. Okay, here a little bit of as I said, it's uh, abnormal psychology is a vast. Uh, area uh, wherein we uh, we learn uh, many disorders and uh, um, uh, see each disorder may have different uh, type of symptoms the diagnosis uh, is to be very correct the treatment may differ okay and in some cases if uh, uh, it is not under the control of a psychotherapist or a counselor or a, a medical social worker first it is uh, that the person is the particular uh, patient is referred to a psychiatrist where medication is undertaken and each uh, that particular uh, situation decides how far the medication is to be taken and once the person gets proper insight then only we can go for counseling sessions or we can have a supportive therapy or different therapies can be applied to this individuals okay and this this to, this is to be taken care of uh, by the uh, counselors that means uh, as you all uh, uh, our a day will be in, uh, will be involved in this type of uh, areas okay or settings 
So this is to be taken care of because when one, for example, a client approaches to you or any bystander is there to support the client to, to and uh, refer and comes towards you, you might be um, taking all the history about all the background, all the, about all the informations about that particular person. But sometimes we see that it, uh, the person has little disorder, this it is disoriented. Uh, the person is a little bit away from the normality or uh, it is not under our control. The first thing is. To be done as I said, it will have to refer to a psychiatrist, and then you have to be connected with the psychiatrist. And once that particular person is okay with the medications, um, uh, that the next procedure starts with how to cope up with the situation, how to have control, or how to develop confidence, or how to overcome the difficult, how the person can help himself to cope up with the situation, and then the, the, your role lies okay. So, as I said, it's a vast uh, area. Um, uh, we will be looking um, uh, like uh, peripherally. We can. We will be looking about some of the disorders, um, uh, psychological disorders. Okay, there are many disorders. Um, uh, neurotic disorders are there. Psychotic disorders are there. Um, uh, like uh, childhood disorders are there. Okay, um, uh, disorders with the two. Uh, or serious older people are there, um, and then behavioral disorders are there, different types, it is categorized in different, uh, uh, that is what the classification, uh, I, I had given a little bit of, uh, um, I had given a little bit of uh, introduction about the classification, okay. Uh, now uh, we'll see some of the disorders of childhood. Okay, I think some of you uh, among this learner may be, uh, uh, may, may be uh, like well, well and maybe uh, like uh, knowing about the disorders related to childhood. Can anyone say some of the disorders related to childhood? Whether we can say the disorders according to their ge genetical disorders also will come under this. Ah, yeah, genetic like, disorders will also okay. come. Yeah. Down syndrome like that. Yeah, yeah. The common yeah. term we can say as mental retardation. Yeah, yes, yeah. Mental, and yeah. Then, uh, then um, attention disorders are there. Ah, yeah, hyperac yeah. Very hyperactivity yeah. in students Very, are there. Yeah, hyperactivity. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then learning disabilities are there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These are, yeah. So as uh, like um, uh, let's see, psychiatry, uh, the field of psychiatry is very big and it is difficult for each of us uh, to pinpoint or to understand each and every. But peripherally, we can understand uh, while you are uh, interacting with the person, the type of problem the particular person is having. So that will help to go on towards the treatment. And so that is what, uh, like suppose taking the childhood disorder, one, is, one of the child disorders is mental retardation and uh, mental retardation as we know that uh, the, uh, the uh, individual who is retarded uh, who is called mental retardation uh, is uh, like uh, intellectually low inability to cope up with the situations uh, maybe some uh, the, uh, the child may have some language difficulties uh, or we see in simple way we can say the IQ level uh, is low and IQ level is low isn't it so um, as normal uh, children okay so um, uh, suppose uh, a normal children a normal child if you tell uh, to uh, like count one to ten the normal child may count in a second but in the same way uh, just uh, in an uh, uh, the a person, a child who is a little bit whose IQ is little low may have difficulty. He, the particular child, may have to think uh, a second or a minute to uh, count one, two. That delays that there's a delay in the speech, and these are some of the symptoms where we can find out that particular uh, the child is suffering from some retardation, and that is called mental retardation. As and uh, to, uh, it is known that one to three percent of general population is mentally retarded okay it is um, like sub average we can say that the symptom related to mental retardation is sub average general intellectual functioning um, deficit or impairment in adaptive functioning the child may have difficulty in adapting the situations uh, uh, quickly um, and uh, and this is mainly this uh, uh, this is diagnosed mainly before 18 years of age okay and uh, there are different types of uh, retardation um, mild retardation um, and the moderate retardation severe retardation profound retardation mild retardation uh, means uh, the particular child is able to handle some of the situations if proper training is given the repeated training is given to that particular uh, situation at the uh, particular child the child is able to handle the situation okay 
or in moderate also moderate also uh, regular training or continuous uh, the same uh, type of practices given every day uh, the if uh, the, the particular child can uh, cope up with the situations if if some new uh, uh, suddenly a new uh, situation is given the child may have difficulty in handling the situation and, and that uh, that comes mild moderate and severe means the particular child uh, or um, this uh, very uh, the particular person may have very uh, poor uh, 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 like uh, poor motor uh, skills motor development delayed uh, developmental absent delayed speech uh, might be difficult to talk uh, uh, might not be able to uh, handle the situation totally means cannot uh, uh, cannot uh, perform the activities daily activities of but, uh, of the child's own, the, the particular child has to depend on many others. Okay, so that becomes under comes under the severe mental and retardation. As you are aware, the term severe means the degree is little bit higher. In the same way, profound is this. This is also uh, majorly uh, many of uh, the uh, um, organic system or the in, uh, brain system is totally like delayed or may have difficulty to handle the situation in, the, in a better way and um, the, the nursing care or the life support or the support system has to be very strong towards this pro, uh, uh, retarded person who is uh, profound. Okay, so these are some of the um, uh, some of the uh, like uh, different, some of the type of mental retardation and when one of our student has mentioned that uh, the reasons for mental retardation uh, may be genetic prenatal causes um, and uh, some other physical disorders or social cultural causes also can be the reason for mental retardation okay so why uh, why we are we have to learn you might be all thinking that why this is uh, we have to be very uh, like uh, involved in this uh, uh, to know more about mental retardation or about the childhood disorder see once we come to know about this disorder or we, we are aware of some of the uh, informations about these disorders then we we can handle the situations in a better way or you can refer the situations or we can go uh, uh, we can uh, provide some of the therapies or some of the helping situations to this um, uh, 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 this type of category of people or you can provide support to their um, uh, family members even okay so their support is also very important so our um, uh, um, responsibility lies towards the support system okay those who have severe mental disorders okay so here also some of the causes we said may be genetic uh, as you said pronormal abnormalities may be there like down syndrome fragile leg syndrome um, then single gene disorders uh, cranial abnormalities or maybe if, if it is perinatal causes maybe due to some infections or uh, birth trauma or uh, the expectant mother might have undergone any type of uh, disease that can affect the uh, brain metabolism of that particular child okay and that can uh, bring to a mental retardation even okay and uh, sometimes uh, the um, for sometimes lead poisoning cerebral palsy infections with some brain structure or some hit or uh, um, like any um, uh, sort of uh, shock that can also uh, bring some of the difficulties with the particular child okay and uh, social cultural uh, um, uh, causes also there are some of the there can be a chances like deprivation of social cultural uh, simulation some psychiatric disorders may also affect this uh, the brain structure of uh, the particular child and that causes mental retardation okay um, and uh, see, um, uh, and the, the main uh, the main treatment where uh, this uh, uh, mental retardation lies in uh, the training of that particular uh, child. Okay, training of that particular uh, child, and we have you all know that there are many special schools where particularly special school teachers and other officials uh, train these uh, children uh, to handle the situations in a better way. Okay, and uh, we also say that now the term is different. We don't say mental retarded. We say it yeah, as special children or um, uh, exceptional children or uh, otherwise able children or uh, uh, all these terms are given because if it is uh, the researchers have been done that even if the proper training is given, uh, the, so these children can cope up with the situation. So other type of uh, disorder is known as pervasive developmental uh, disorder. Okay. 
perversive, that is PDT. See, all these are very technical terms. It is uh, just uh, taking some sessions. Uh, um, uh, I think it will not be enough for you. It is, uh, I suggest that you must have a good reading and you must update your knowledge. Okay. So, perversive developmental disorder. That means um, it refers to a group of developmental conditions that involve delayed or impaired communication and social skills and social skills. We just, uh, uh, just am um, uh, putting uh, thrust on this particular word, social skill or impaired communication. There is a lacking in social skills. There is an impact communication. The particular child may have difficulty in communicating the proper information towards the other people. Okay, so that is we can say as impaired communication, social skill, cognitive skill, the learning capacity, the grasping capacity will all be be delayed and. This is known as, according to the American Psychiatric Association, uh, this is this uh, this is known as PDD or Pervasive Developmental Disorder. Okay. And the early, um, uh, like uh, the different PDDs include Asperger's syndrome, uh, Rett syndrome, and uh, childhood disintegrative disorder. PDD is a uh, is a broad term for different types of disorders. P perversive developmental disorders and Rett's disorder, uh, Asperger's syndrome disorder, disintegrative disorder comes under uh, the um, uh, this PDD. Okay, and uh, commonly we can say that. Uh, the symptoms are almost uh, same: delayed in speech, delayed in uh, grasping the situation, um, uh, connecting the uh, connecting the uh, like uh, uh, having connection with the situations. Okay, um, um, trouble interacting, playing or relating to others, avoiding eye contact. Here, Asperger's uh, syndrome, you will see uh, the children; uh, they will uh, they will uh, have difficulty in eye contact. They will uh, they will always put their down head and they will do their work, even though they may. The same work which is being done regularly, it will be done by them, but they will not have a proper eye contact. Okay, they will avoid, they will not look at the people, not pointing to subjects or not giving attention, unusual movements. Um, okay, these people or these children will be showing unusual movements and delay in uh, uh, developing the milestones already achieved. Playing with the same toy. That is what uh, they they will not uh, they will not uh, try to um, uh, have some new thing or they will not find out any. Uh, they don't want to explore any new thing. What they had been doing it, uh, they will continue with the same thing. And that is what uh, this pervasive development disorder tells. And moreover, Asperger's development disorder is one of the thing. And at the same and. Um, the other uh, uh, also there is uh, related to pervasive development disorder is autism. Autism it's a um, common uh, uh, disorder. You might all have heard if you have been in uh, uh, like in uh, this type of field or settings, autism and uh, the uh, the common reason for autism it is non uh, known. But after three or two or three years. Uh, only uh, uh, one can diagnose that particular child is uh, suffering from autism, and there is no such medication uh, to um, uh, for that's a not that uh, like uh, to overcome this problem. But regular training and practice will help to overcome the children those who are suffering from autism. Okay, and uh, um, scientists believe that that is some of the neuro. There's a complication in neurobiological uh, uh, situation or brain uh, brain. Uh, uh, some difficulty in the brain structure okay and um, also there can be chances of chromosomal abnormalities even for the autism okay um, like um, or sometimes it is also found out some researchers have also found out that maybe it is because of the food allergy excessive amount of yeast or some uh, situations in the digestive tract that can also uh, or exposure to toxins okay uh, that can also be a reason for uh, autism and here also as i said uh, mainly um, these um, uh, the children those who are having uh, this situations will be uh, will have uh, it is to be proper training uh, regular training only will help these children to cope up with the situation and i think um, uh, as we are into the course of uh, in counseling i think uh, these uh, the iq level of these children may be low and 
whatever way of uh, like interacting with these children uh, may not work out uh, only uh, through the different activities or regular activities will help them to cope up with the situation and to handle uh, and uh, the uh, most affected people uh, of this autism or with this purpose development disorder is the parents isn't it parents who have given birth to this children they have, may have difficulties to um, um, uh, like uh, to overcome the situation or they may be in uh, a trauma that how to cope up with a child in future okay so support system is, uh, will uh, help more and uh, our duty lies in supporting these bystanders or these children to handle the um, uh, children or how to move how to move on with the situations okay so here our uh, counseling session uh, is more important towards the parents or the siblings or the other support systems okay and the other uh, also as you all said hyper the other disorder related to the child is hyperkinetic disorder or attention deficit disorder okay that was um, one of uh, the learner mentioned about different childhood disorders okay and these are categorized okay but in generally speaking we uh, see a child uh, uh, with any difficulty we, we, we don't go for categorization or we don't go for classification of psychological disorders and that is really meant for the psychiatrist uh, only but as a um, uh, counselor or in the field of these settings we when we observe a particular child with difficulty we name that okay this particular child is suffering from um, hyperactivity uh, adhd or uh, some autism but we don't categorize that this comes under uh, pdd or this comes under uh, some other disorders okay so here also generally speaking attention deficit disorder that comes under hyperkinetic disorder okay that comes and hyperkinetic disorder but as i said as a general uh, term we say as high attention deficit disorders okay and uh, this was um, uh, like uh, in uh, this disorder was found in 1854 and attention deficit disorder is a four clinical type c this is categorized attention deficit disorder is classified into four different categories and i said that uh, we have to be regular update we have to regularly update with the knowledge and uh, um, see merely by telling all these in a, at a, a, a in a session i think it will be difficult for you uh, um, to remember all these things but uh, it comes uh, under high again i want i would like to repeat it comes under hyperkinetic disorder and there are four types okay it is uh, four clinical types that is hyperactivity without hyperactivity residual type and with contact disorder these are some of the uh, but as as yesterday i mentioned that i too worked in a counseling uh, center and i have an experience in uh, working with the children in school setting um, and also i worked as a mental social worker here uh, i see uh, um, uh, we have a theoretical knowledge, but we are not into the deep theoretical knowledge. But we can identify the situations, and we don't uh, like go into the uh, classifying or the categorizing. But when you find out or when you interact with the bystanders or uh, with the uh, uh, who is related to the child, we when we come into uh, uh, the our conclusion um, by collecting many symptoms or uh, different activity daily routine activities uh, uh, we term it as uh, the particular child is suffering from contact disorder or the particular child is having hyperactive disorder and i think that this only will work out with uh, you people also and i don't know um, many of you might be involved in uh, the psychiatric situations also or psychiatric learning also uh, and that is great appreciable from my side that you are into the uh, field of psychiatry okay so here um, these categories these are categorized and um, mainly uh, the uh, symptoms they show in the hyper this is also one of uh, the type of disorder and the symptoms shows a combination of overactive uh, poorly modulated behavior uh, with marked inattention and lack of persistent task involvement uh, all these are related to the um, uh, symptoms of 
hyperactive disorder or active, uh, like attention deficit disorder. Here the term itself says, isn't it? Attention deficit disorder. That means there's a uh, the particular childhood child is having uh, uh, it's a difficulty in attending atten attending the certain situations. Okay, um, uh, I remember uh, a case. Uh, I just want to share a case. Otherwise, just sharing uh, all this. Uh, Telling about all theoretical aspect, uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, will uh, that will give me a little bit of difficulty because I had been practicing also. I was a practitioner and I was working in a school also. So um, the, there was a child uh, in third standard. That means uh, the uh, the child was eight years old, and um, uh, the the teacher referred that particular uh, um, student uh, to um, to the counselor, and it was found that the child was highly disturb highly uh, disturbing the whole class okay that was a class of 30 students and uh, um, what the particular child is to do that uh, the particular child is always like very restless uh, the, he always runs around the whole class sometimes if the teacher has written something on the board you know it is uh, the, it was a third uh, standard student and the teacher used to write on the blackboard and whatever was written uh, and when the other students tried to write down in the notebook what he used to be, uh, do is that he just uh, runs around any of the student and uh, um, just uh, like uh, take away the pencil or the something like that okay or uh, he, uh, with, uh, even if he's having a pencil he will just scribble on the other uh, uh, students notebook and these these type of uh, um, activities or this type of uh, um, activity was done by these uh, the, uh, the, this child and that was uh, finally um, uh, with uh, like uh, looking into the many situations, talking with other teachers also, talking with the parents also, we found that the particular child was suffering from hyperactive disorder. And so this is what the symptom is. Like uh, he doesn't uh, show attention in the class, he is very um, show, uh, hyperactive or he is very restless. Mm. All these uh, are the symptoms. Okay. And uh, this is mainly uh, like uh, in the first five years or uh, till eight or nine years. Uh, this uh, uh, these type of difficulties will be shown by the children. Mm. And the other symptoms uh, related to hyperactivity disorder is uh, easily distracted, uh, forgetting things, uh, frequently switching from one activity to another. That is what I is, uh, gave an example to you. Um, uh, then uh, having difficulty maintaining focus on one task. Okay, becoming bored with the task only uh, very after very soon uh, within few minutes the particular child will get bored of one task and then the particular child wants to switch to the other one. Okay, and then um, uh, very confused, um, uh, restless, uh, or uh, like um, uh, like uh, harming some other student, uh, harming some other children or a sibling. Uh, all these type of difficulties uh, will be shown by these children, and they are termed as hyperactive. Uh, this, uh, the children with uh, attention deficit hyper uh, active. Okay. Uh, so then there are contact disorders also. As uh, I said, there's a classification of many childhood disorders contact disorder. So, uh, contact the term itself uh, says that contact the, the, the particular uh, child performing in the uh, performing any act may not be accepted by others. Okay, so that type of uh, and naturally, if, uh, if if you might be thinking that each and every child during some uh, 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 age, uh, like uh, the child is like this only, isn't it? Very uh, naughty, mischief, uh, or restless, or uh, have showing different and temper, temper tantrums, uh, stubborn. All these are sometimes common to each and every child. But sometimes this becomes under uh, beyond the control, or you are not able to balance the situation. Uh, or this repeatedly follows the same thing, then we can uh, uh, like term it that particular child is having some difficulty or some uh, uh, showing some difficulty in adjusting with the situation, and then um, uh, we have to find out why this particular child is performing such an act, such a, uh, activity which is not acceptable by everyone. So we can term it as um, uh, like conduct disorder. Okay, it's a second like marked by a pattern of repetitive behavior wherein the rights of others or social norms are violated. Okay, the diagnosis is only made when the conduct is far in excess of the routine mischief of children and adolescents. Okay. 
And here also the onset occurs much before 18 years. You can see this type of difficulties before 18 years. Okay, and um, usually before the uh, before that particular child attains uh, puberty. Okay, and um, um, the, according to ICD-10, there are four subtypes. Each and every disorder has different categorization also. And in generally speaking, uh, we, as I said, because this is to remind you again, again, um, uh, uh, this is not Pakka psychiatric. Uh, 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 we, it is very hard for us uh, to learn everything according to the manual or according to the diagnostic or ICD-11. Uh, but a little bit of uh, symptom uh, finding out some of the symptoms or observing some of the difficulties between the children, we can uh, we can uh, uh, find diagnose the situation. Okay, so according to ICD-10, or there are four types of this disorder: conduct disorder, confined to family context, uh, uh, unsocialized conduct disorder, socialized conduct disorder, oppositional, oppositional defined disorder. Okay. And here um, uh, the conduct disorder refers to uh, like uh, stealing the things, frequently lying, running away from home or school, physical uh, uh, violences, uh, cruelty towards other people and animals. They may, they may not think what are when these uh, uh, the children, uh, those who are suffering from conduct disorder are, uh, may repeatedly showing some sort of uh, violated uh, situations okay violations or some harmful situations uh, uh, which cannot be accepted by the common people or um, uh, those who relate those who related with this child okay and mainly they may they might be harming uh, maybe they might be harming themselves also harming uh, or um, uh, like uh, having destructive nature um, uh, sometimes they may be, they may uh, they may lie always or uh, they may show different uh, type of uh, uh, like um, uh, some act like stealing or uh, even uh, uh, you know, like um, stealing something or going for robbery, running away from home or school, all this comes under contact disorder. Okay, and um, mainly uh, the treatment, what we are related is related to giving help, isn't it? Um, uh, if uh, if one, one, once the problem is diagnosed, the, the other aspect, the other part is related to, is related to us is giving help. Or what type of uh, uh, what type of help can be given every time uh, when we take the classes or related to uh, counseling or uh, related to social work, uh, the learners uh, 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 like they have the apprehension as how to handle the situation. Isn't it? Once this is a problem, or once the problem is diagnosed, how to handle the situation? That is a the question before us, isn't it? Because each individual is different and each situations may be different and uh, um, we have to have a proper assessment of the uh, situation. So merely just uh, having one or two sessions, we cannot uh, come to a consensus. So we cannot conclude that this, this particular client is uh, suffering from uh, such disorder. So thorough, thorough investigation or thorough assessment is uh, required when you work with the client. Okay, that is uh, some of the basic things. What uh, I have felt uh, through my um, experience uh, because yesterday also I was discussing that in initial sessions if we come to know many of uh, the situations about that particular client or other uh, people related to that particular client um, after four or five after seven or eight session uh, the whole picture changes we just can't imagine that that this uh, the, this was not the reason the reason is something else okay so that can happen uh, to any uh, any of the situations Okay, so when you work with the client, it is very important that we have to have a thorough understanding of each and every aspect and that is what proper exploration, proper assessment is necessary or proper studying about the particular client. Then only we can come to a situation. See, as I said about the conduct disorder, about this about uh, the child uh, related to childhood disorder usually uh, you might be thinking uh, you see now every child has these type of symptoms okay but we cannot term that this particular child is suffering from contact disorder so that is what is the most important thing we have to have a thorough understanding of that but a regular uh, follow-up is also very important if this uh, act is um, uh, like uh, is repeatedly being uh, undertaken then we have to uh, uh, then only we can come to a conclusion that this particular child is having conduct disorder okay that's very very important and um, the treatment is a little bit difficult uh, because behavioral educational and psychotherapeutic measures uh, are important for changing the behavior sometimes 
the psychoeducation is very important um, uh, education to the parents or siblings are very important uh, then little bit of behavioral therapy is very important or uh, like, uh, sometimes um, like uh, to control uh, some psychiatrist also um, uh, refers some uh, tonics or some uh, some uh, like you know uh, to to have a brain metabolism uh, some um, like when I was uh, working in a psychiatric team, the psychiatrist uh, used to prescribe a tonic uh, for, to have a mental uh, like brain metabolism to control uh, that uh, restlessness, etc., etc. That depends. Uh, we don't want to interfere in that because uh, uh, the right. Anyways, yes. And uh, this uh, is about related to the managing of these um, children related with the disorders. Okay. The next is tick disorder. The next is Disorder. The tick disorders are characterized by the presence of tick. Tick is an abnormal involuntary movement. Okay, this is an involuntary uh, abnormal um, uh, like uh, movement uh, which occurs suddenly, repeatedly, rapidly, and purposeless in nature. Okay, um, uh, sometimes they have uh, these children uh, have a different type of uh, movement in their uh, body uh, organs, and uh, the different there are two types of tick disorder. Just remember, these are tick disorder. These are called tick disorder, uh, motor tick, catastrophic characterized by repeated uh, motor movements like vocal tick characterized by repetitive vocalizations they may uh, they may have uh, like uh, the repetition of the things repetition of uh, speech repetition of words um, uh, uh, less clarity of the terms uh, uh, a common uh, like uh, those who are related uh, regularly with this children uh, can only understand what the term is they are speaking about what word is their uh, like uh, uh, pronouncing or spell, it is being spelled by them okay so these type of uh, disorders are called tic, tic disorders p i c t and vocal tic and motor tic tic disorders can be either uh, chronic and a specialized type of chronic tic disorder is Tourette's syndrome or Tourette's disorder the another type is Tourette's disorder um, here also they have they will have uh, uh, motors uh, motor uh, like um, uh, difficulties in moving moving uh, their uh, uh, body parts or uh, vocalization difficulties uh, and uh, and uh, you see uh, mainly this occurs uh, before 11 years of age and almost before 21 years of age okay and mainly this disorder is common in males and has a prevalence rate of about 0.5 per 100 people. The rate is uh, not that high, it is only 0.5 per 100 people. Okay. Motor tics sometimes can be uh, simple or complex. So, um, like uh, they, they may be having uh, different types of, uh, they may show which is uh, not adapted to uh, or which is not acceptable by others, uh, these motor tics like facial gestures, uh, stamping, jumping, uh, without any situations looking into, they are not aware of the situations, they are not aware of the uh, present condition and they may start jumping, they must they start stamping or they start hitting themselves, uh, um, uh, these type of uh, act will be performed by these uh, children okay and um, vocal tics uh, sometimes uh, they may shout they may uh, uh, produce different type of sounds like barking sound or sometimes we feel that it is uh, like you know sound of uh, some uh, uh, very annoying type of uh, sound uh, maybe they may be um, uh, bringing out uh, some sort of annoying sound okay and uh, vocal tics also includes uh, like echolalia. Echolalia means repetition of heart phrases, repetition of particular words, a repetition uh, there uh, we can say echolalia, palalia, coprala. These are some of the very uh, technical terms uh, related to this uh, tic disorder. And I think uh, um, uh, these type of uh, the children those are suffering from tic disorders uh, um, uh, may be uh, treated uh, um, 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 you know, in a special school uh, with uh, uh, specialized uh, field, uh, specialized teachers, uh, those who have undergone a special training, uh, with, and uh, and also speech therapist, uh, physiotherapist. These uh, uh, multidisciplinary team. Uh, we need to have a multidisciplinary team uh, where we can help these children uh, to uh, 
handle the situation of themselves okay and uh, there are many different special schools also where separate uh, help is given to uh, uh, depend, depending on the problem of the child separate help is uh, given to these children okay and there are different uh, special schools uh, where generally speaking when we hear about the special school only mentally retarded the children are admitted but here uh, but there are uh, a centers where these type of um, uh, like neurosciences uh, 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 where uh, the children with different type of um, delayed development in brain structure these children are given training and here there is a multi multiple uh, disciplinary multiplicity discipline uh, like disciplinary team okay like help of a physiotherapist help of a speech therapist help of a counselor help of a social worker help of a dietitian uh, of course there's a doctor specialized in this field a psychiatric nurse all these team together uh, um, support the uh, child or um, and also uh, there are places where uh, these children are uh, there in particular centers day care centers are there uh, full time centers are there where regular training and if needed medication is given uh, to cope up with the situation okay so as a school of counselor it is important that we must understand uh, um, the uh, all these areas okay then whenever there is a need uh, for a reference you have to refer to a uh, concerned uh, particular specialized setting okay that is what i was telling about all this uh, specialized areas also very important because um, as a student of uh, or as a, as a counselor it is not necessary that we have all the um, informations about each and every biological conditions uh, or psychological conditions of a individual of an individual okay but when we start interacting or we when we start collecting the informations uh, we come to know that okay first this has to be done second this has to be done then or what help to be given it is not merely giving informations or giving uh, uh, having the different counseling sessions will not work out with this type of situations then you have to refer then again you have to have a follow up with this type of situation that is what i want to tell each and every time that we must be aware of the situation uh, about uh, we have to have a thorough understanding of um, a particular uh, person or individual okay and here it is like um, the um, what you call uh, mainly management is uh, how to manage this uh, uh, children with tic disorders maybe uh, medicine medication behavior therapy uh, behavior modification therapy sometimes reinforcement therapy uh, will also help okay so these are some of the uh, management styles where you uh, can help the children with tic disorder and some other uh, um, other issues related with the children are eating disorder uh, then um, uh, like uh, what you call um, bed bedding or uh, enuresis in the technical term for bed bedding we call as enuresis okay generally speaking uh, many children have the difficulty like uh, bed bedding uh, till particular age but sometimes what happens if the situation is not handled and it is like it is continued for later life also it is important that um, the, uh, the particular uh, um, like some help is um, uh, proper help not some proper help is is very important for this type of children uh, where how to handle uh, the situation of bed bedding the technical term for bed bedding is enuresis okay and uh, um, what usually um, as uh, as we uh, as if you are in a counseling field if there is a situation uh, uh, of, of a child who is suffering from enuresis or bed bedding the first thing is that an organic uh, examination is very very important before we start um, asking all the details or once the the bystanders or the child is expressing about the difficulty of bed bedding the important thing is that first we have to have an organic uh, examination or a medical examination wherein it can be found that if there is any uh, any difficulty in uh, urinary tract uh, um, uh, organs or uh, urinary bladder if the particular child is not able to control uh, this particular situation okay and for if 
if everything is normal, then we have to uh, move towards the psychological part. And there can be many reasons uh, for uh, uh, having this difficulty, the bedwetting or aneurysis. Maybe because of psychological disorder, psychological issues, uh, fear of something can be a reason for bedwetting. Uh, then um, a sibling rivalry can be bedwetting or conflict between the um, uh, farm parents it can be or parents that are away from the child uh, or any sort of fixation all these can be a reason for bedwetting or the technical term is enuresis okay and uh, why i am uh, like you know these situations if uh, um, uh, you may come across uh, the children with this particular difficulty um, very often so that is what uh, um, I uh, like you know how to deal with the, these type of kids. Okay, so um, uh, and we have to find out the reason. Uh, you know, detailed information collection of information is very very important. And uh, here also different type of uh, therapies can be undertaken. Uh, uh, like um, the uh, toilet uh, toilet training is important or some type of uh, like um, um, management of this situation uh, can be handled uh, or if the child is uh, in here the child is able to handle the situation you can uh, give a timetable uh, you can help them to give a proper timetable as how to have a proper toilet uh, training or toilet time going uh, for uh, urination then uh, or um, uh, like some conditions some situations can be modified and then uh, can be helped uh, with this um, particular problem. Okay, and there is another uh, uh, problem with the childhood is these categorization of these disorders are called elimination disorders. These types, aneurysis, encopresis, all comes under elimination disorder. Okay, elimination disorder includes aneurysis, encopresis. Encopresis means here um, uh, the, uh, the particular child will not ha have a control on the bowel movement. Um, um, it, it is a repeated passage of feces and inappropriate at inappropriate time or place after bowel control is physiologically possible. This is not due to the presence of any organic cause which is called fetal incontinence. Okay, but pro improper toilet training can be one of the uh, reasons or a fear of going to the toilet that can be a reason that a particular person, uh, the particular child is not able uh, to handle the situation and uh, and uh, this uh, this can, this is also had to be handled by proper toilet training by the support of the parents um, uh, like uh, uh, modifying the situation all this will help to have a control on this uh, situation okay and these are um, and, uh, some of the uh, uh, different types of elimination disorders so we just we have seen there are so many uh, disorders which do even uh, childhood itself isn't it the other um, difficulty other disorder uh, with the child is uh, childhood disorder is pica p i c a pica pica uh, of infancy and childhood here pica means uh, your uh, uh, persistently uh, is it's a disorder that occurs when children persistently eat one or more uh, non-food substances okay uh, you might also have undergone or um, you might have uh, observed some of the in during the childhood uh, the children or uh, also in the later uh, in adolescent also uh, that prolongs like uh, children may have a tendency okay um, uh, to eat uh, like uh, mud okay to taste mud or um, a piece of chalk uh, or pencil, um, um, tip of the pencil, uh, they might be just um, um, crushing or chewing uh, this thing uh, uh, or uh, they may be uh, like tasting which is uh, not uh, common for everything but the products which uh, generally people don't taste, they would like to taste and this is uh, one of the disorder and this disorder is called uh, pickup disorder. Okay, it is not a dangerous problem but uh, it may Cause a uh, harm. Okay, uh, um, I I came across a case when I was working as a, as a medical social worker in a hospital. Uh, and that is not a picker. That is not a continuous um, uh, type of act. But uh, there was the child um, was attracted uh, by. Uh, See many years back. Uh, now it is a liquid form of uh, like um, uh, um, this uh, what do you call mosquito repellents are a liquid type. This many years back, like 
most probably before 20 to 28 back that was a like a cake type of isn't it a cake like small piece of uh, repellent was inserted uh, in uh, uh, this mosquito repellent uh, things and uh, uh, that is uh, to uh, get rid of the mosquitoes and that uh, particular case what was that child tried to taste that uh, particular piece of uh, thing, okay, particular material that piece uh, of cake. Uh, uh, it's very thin a uh, biscuit, uh, not even, uh, it's not big, uh, nearly a uh, very small piece. That, that particular, the child tasted that uh, uh, that particular repellent and uh, got into the problem. Okay, so uh, that uh, that may be if uh, that may that particular child might have a tendency to taste some of the things which normally uh, people don't eat, isn't it? So here, um, uh, like uh, um, some of the some of the things uh, children uh, you usually go with this paint. They eat paint or a plaster, mud. A piece of chalk, or uh, they may chew the cloth. They may sometimes uh, uh, ch child may chew the cloth. Okay, the taste of the cloth. Uh, they may be, may be very much interested, uh, and uh, sometimes they even uh, the children. Uh, some children you see um, may eat animal droppings, sand, insect, uh, pebbles. Uh, they they choose pebbles on, and these are some of the uh, things which non non food. Okay, they are called as non-food substances which normal person will not do okay and that uh, disorder is called pica and uh, theorized to cause of pica include iron deficiency maybe because of iron deficiency or anemia zinc deficiency mental retardation developmental delays or family history of pica these are some of the causes why this tendency is uh, on and often okay the causes for pica includes iron deficiency zinc deficiency mental retardation or developmental delays or family history even okay so uh, or maybe some of the fixation or lack of appropriate stimula stimulation or lack of parental attention can also be the cause of pica disorder and here management is mainly about uh, the um, child uh, looking care to be observed carefully or uh, keeping away all those things but it is very hard isn't it but uh, uh, some um, uh, like uh, negative reinforcement also be given uh, learning theories can be adapted learning uh, therapies can be adapted and so slowly and steadily this problem can be overcome okay this is what how to manage the uh, the children with this type of disorder pica disorder okay the other disorder of childhood is separation anxiety disorder separation anxiety it is a mental health disorder that begins in childhood and is characterized by worrying that is out of the proportion to the situation of temporarily leaving home or separating from the loved ones See, there are situations where, uh, suppose uh, the um, uh, the sibling, uh, related to the sibling uh, or uh, the loved ones, who, if parents are not uh, with the particular uh, child, or um, uh, for a few years the child was with the parents, but suddenly the parents have to had to move uh, from this particular place to another place. That can bring some sort of anxiety uh, among the children, and if it goes beyond the situation or beyond the control, that becomes a disorder. Every time it is, it should be remembered that uh, when you have a thorough understanding with the client, uh, we have to find out uh, the span, uh, the period of time, how far this particular client was suffering from such a situation, and what uh, what are the uh, uh, reasons or what are the um, uh, like why this particular child this uh, got has got into such a situation uh, where is unable to handle. Okay, so the extreme uh, level uh, only we can say that this is a disorder and disorders may vary sometimes what happens when when it's a um, our a beginning period when we uh, start uh, working or it's a uh, when we are very new to uh, the field uh, whatever we see we try to term this as a disorder but that, that cannot be every time be correct it is very important that you have to be very careful when you have uh, when you uh, means uh, you have to be very careful when you work with the uh, with these situations you have to have a thorough understanding then only you can uh, 
come to uh, finding all the symptoms or the span of time, we can term that this is a disorder. So this is separation anxiety. See, uh, commonly we can say that each and every person suffers from anxiety symptoms. Um, uh, even if we, each of one of us have many anxieties, uh, many related to, uh, if your exam is near, you will have a little bit of anxiety. If, um, uh, if something uh, will go wrong, it is not um, had gone wrong, but uh, assuming that it will go wrong, we will, will have anxiety, isn't it? These are some of the common characteristics of a human being. And uh, that. And the thing is that uh, people are able to balance. Sometimes it goes beyond the control. That becomes a disorder. And among the children also, there are the, there is separation anxiety. Separation anxiety disorder. That is, that particular child is separated. is being separated by with uh, some situation uh, or uh, some conditions. And that uh, particular child is uh, showing different types of uh, symptoms which is not adapted so that becomes a separation anxiety disorder okay and uh, some of the symptoms of separation anxiety is uh, repeated excessive anxiety uh, then um, like um, um, a fear of uh, like getting lost or uh, somebody's going to kidnap fear or nightmares uh, uh, then um, relax sometimes they tend to go to sleep uh, then um, uh, other uh, other uh, physical ailments like uh, frequent stomach ache, uh, headache, uh, nausea, or vomiting, uh, uh, loss of appetite, all the many reasons uh, have had to combine. Then only we can say that uh, this particular child is suffering from anxiety disorder. Okay. And uh, uh, as um, uh, the cause uh, causes may be many. Uh, we cannot, uh, the separation can be, uh, or uh, like um, separation is one of the reason, or the, and also uh, maybe um, uh, the expectant mother um, uh, might have gone any of the serious uh, shocking trauma that can also be like, we cannot say that is a hereditary or genetic, but sometimes. Okay, so uh, managing um, uh, these uh, children with anxiety is counseling is one of the techniques. Uh, behavior techniques um, uh, can be given. Uh, then uh, behavior includes learning, uh, learning techniques, uh, reinforcement, conditioning, uh, conditioning techniques. All these can be uh, some of the uh, techniques wherein uh, we can help the child with this situation. Okay. So these are these were some of the uh, childhood disorders. Okay. Um, and also, as I said, this is uh, this comes under the category of DSM and ICD also DSM T. And then the present uh, DSM is uh, just to update your knowledge. It is DSM TR five. And related to international uh, classification of diseases, ICD. It is ICD eleven. And whenever you get your time, uh, when you uh, when you want to update your knowledge, you can Google it. You can search it. Just a, a diagnostic statistical manual or DSM TF5, we will come across many of the disorders with the children, uh, and in the same way, ICD interim, uh, by developed by WHO, we uh, will come across. Uh, these are all um, categorized in different chapters. Okay. Now we are moving to the anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorder. Who is not having anxiety? So each and every person suffers from anxiety. As I said uh, just before that, uh, many instances, isn't it? Uh, and just now I was uh, I was into anxiety like I was not getting connected my network uh, suddenly I lost my network uh, I was very much concerned oh my god how to start the class I may get delayed so uh, next we'll move into anxiety disorder yeah I was just I was sharing my experience isn't it so but if this persists or this continues, that will become a problem. I have to take help from an expert, isn't it? So this is what is anxiety. The anxiety disorder that becomes an anxiety disorder. See, um, uh, like uh, we one may be nervous, one, one may be fear, fear of we may have fear of exam, fear of it. If we are going to organize a function, actually we may have lots of confusions and we may be where we have anxiety that how whether this function will uh, be will take place in a proper way or any confusions will be there whether everyone will be supporting all these these are these are some of the very very the common uh, thing related to that isn't it so but certain uh, when uh, it becomes uh, the uh, uh, the degree increases or this is a repeated issue 
uh, then uh, there's a disorder that becomes a disorder and a particular uh, the, the person has to have uh, go for a help okay so those are some of some of the common anxiety symptoms uh, uh, in, in in the categorization these are uh, some of the symptoms which i have been i am expressing is related to the uh, comes under the uh, classification okay yeah some of the symptoms of common anxiety is uh, uh, like nervousness tension feeling tired dizziness uh, frequent urination heart palpitations feeling uh, like to faint uh, breathlessness sweating trembling worry and uh, apprehension uh, sleeplessness difficulty in uh, concentrating hyper vigilance all these are some of the symptoms of anxiety and um, uh, some of like um, uh, one an individual may express that okay i am feeling uh, very uh, like confusing uh, is am i suffering from anxiety disorder uh, i am i'm very much scared all the situations uh, tells that these are the some of the uh, symptoms of anxiety okay and there, uh, as we said, that uh, we are able to cope up with the situations, isn't it? When some good ha thing happens, we are, we forget the hard situation which we had just before, isn't it? And that because that helps us to overcome the situation. And normally, each and every person is able to have a equilibrium uh, between uh, these situations, and uh, and we forget what had happened uh, because the good had uh, the good might have happened, and we might have forgot the difficult thing that uh, had come across yesterday or just a minute before, isn't it? That is what a coping situation of an individual is. Okay, so uh, but if it is if it lasts for uh, many days or many uh, many hours or many days or many years, that that has to be taken care of. So. Um, uh, this uh, it, uh, this anxiety disorder also has classification. Classification of anxiety disorders. The disorders in this category is mm, generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, uh, different type of phobias, uh, social phobia, uh, agoraphobia. Um, different types of phobias also come under anxiety. So just to uh, um, get a little knowledge, as I said, that is a far vast area. But uh, uh, these are some of the common things where you will uh, come across while you are in a setting or when you are uh, in a place where you are working or you are giving help to the people. Okay, so uh, uh, um, uh, anxiety, there is a classification of an, uh, uh, anxiety disorder which includes generalized uh, generalized uh, anxiety disorder, panic disorder, uh, uh, agoraphobia, specific phobias, and social phobia. All of these comes under the anxiety disorder. Okay. And generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized is satisfied, persistent, and restricted to any particular situation. It consists of excessive, almost daily anxiety and worrying last for six months or longer here the term time a span a span of time is very very important if a situation uh, just uh, um, goes for a long period uh, we can say that particular situation particular individual is having generalized anxiety disorder okay Mm, uh, then uh, mainly uh, uh, like uh, the prevalence is uh, like um, is common. Three to five percent of adults have it sometime during a given year. Women are twice as likely as men to have the disorder. The most uh, affected people for, of generalized and disorder is uh, women. Okay, uh, for no reason uh, they, they may be uh, the women category may be a uh, little worried, a uh, little more worried, uh, highly worried. Okay, this highly highly will become uh, will go into a generalized anxiety disorder. Okay, so uh, here also uh, mainly the symptoms. Symptoms was what I told uh, during the childhood anxiety disorder is almost C, and we all come uh, like it's uh, or you might all have observed, isn't it? about the anxiety and generalized anxiety disorder, isn't it? It is, um, the main symptoms includes feeling uh, like restless, restlessness, um, the particular client uh, may be restless, uh, may be less attentive, uh, always worried, fear, uh, then easily fatigued, irritability, muscle tension, sleep disturbance, all these are the symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. And most probably the causes is uh, not that clear. Okay, there can be many reasons why the person is uh, 
highly uh, has put into anxiety. Okay, and genetic evidence, uh, the biological uh, reasons can be genetic evidence about 15 to 20, 15 to 20 percent of first degree relatives of patients with anxiety disorder themselves. Okay, that can be little bit of uh, genetic also. Uh, then uh, sometimes uh, the chemical agents uh, which is in our uh, which which our brain uh, uh, it takes help. Uh, the infusion of certain uh, the uh, uh, the combination or uh, the problem with the chemical agents may can also be a reason for anxiety uh, like sodium lactate uh, caffeine ingestion of an inhalation of five percent carbon dioxide also can produce panic episodes in uh, these uh, individuals okay so here also the management is uh, like treatment is uh, it is uh, like we are, uh, um, I think uh, we are not the, um, the people to prescribe the, uh, the uh, medications it is very important to remember that you are among these students many of you might be working uh, on a certain setting related to counseling and you might be knowing or if you're working with a psychiatrist it is not the counselor or the social worker or the medical social worker uh, supposed to prescribe the medicines it is uh, the psychiatrist only can prescribe the medicine and if uh, there is a need of a medication uh, the psychiatrist may prescribe certain medicines uh, there may be some medicines found out and um, the other thing is that relaxation therapy from our side we can help them to go for a relaxation therapy meditation yoga okay or having good circle of friends where they can share their difficulties with their uh, friends or any near and dear ones or they can um, we can give some of the techniques like if they find some difficulty to handle situation they can write that situation a piece of paper uh, then um, uh, they just uh, like um, throw away that paper that means your anxiety have uh, thrown away your, your, your you are away from the anxiety that that is just an act okay so repeatedly if this is taken i think the person uh, may uh, uh, the person may have and the person can handle the situation with this anxiety okay and nowadays we see that uh, there's a, in the current scenario each one of us very stressed uh, um, always uh, in a, like um, in a horrible situation um, lots of multiple uh, tasking uh, situations all those things has to be handled in a proper way and these uh, these uh, repeatedly these acts may uh, bring to a person uh, with lots of anxiety and difficulties and, and these uh, and people don't have the time to share with their family or with their friends or their near and dear ones the situations that they undergo isn't it and they suppress all these uh, feelings inside and these can be the reasons of uh, the suppressing and uh, suppressing all those difficulties and they are not able to ventilate they, cannot, they are not getting time to burst out and this this is also one of the reason to um, uh, reason to develop the anxiety okay and that becomes later on a disorder so here the techniques uh, of to overcome disorder this disorder may be one of the techniques is relaxation therapy isn't it find some time laughing therapy is also good uh, sharing uh, some time with the family members and i said uh, meditation yoga and these some of the techniques can be suggested by you when when you are helping the person with anxiety the next uh, we can say that panic and phobic disorder this comes under a generalized anxiety disorder comes under anxiety classification of anxiety disorder the next is panic and phobic disorder as i said this is a very vast area uh, mainly about the psychological disorders and uh, um, i will i would like to share only some of the peripheral uh, things okay this session will last till 12 and the next session will be from 2 to 4 okay so in between i will try uh, to uh, yes any any doubts Yes, ma'am. I have doubt. If you permit, can I speak? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Ma'am, my question is: uh, I also get phobia, but when it is considered as a disorder or when it is considered as normal? Because everyone has phobia <laughs> that what will happen to exams or in life. So, what is the thin line, ma'am, which differentiates between the disorder and the phobia? Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, the thing is that, as I said, the degree. Uh, degree decides okay degree of the severe severity decides uh, whether it is a phobia or it's a disorder phobia generally each and every person has phobia but if uh, you are not able to handle the situation and this situation persists for a long the span of time is very very important 
okay as i said the span how far you are not able to handle the situation that decides that it is a disorder uh, or you have to have a help of a expert that's it okay panic and phobic disorder panic also um, uh, very much highly excessive fear we have come across some highly um, high uh, excessive uh, uh, fear uh, or uh, some um, like uh, a, a shocking situation you have undergone a shocking situation or you have observed a shocking uh, situation where you are not able to handle that particular situation that becomes a panic okay and that uh, uh, when you recollect that act frequently that becomes a panic attack okay so panic the panic attacks are common occurring in more than third adults each year okay um, when two to three times more likely than men to have panic disorders uncommon and it is diagnosed in slightly less than one percent of population okay the symptom is mainly when uh, when we uh, we come uh, like when uh, when it's a panic when when to say that this is a panic attack it is mainly when you have uh, like shortness of breath you have difficulty in breathing uh, you will feel like some sort of suffocation somebody is grabbing you some sort of you are not able to uh, you are totally confused as what to do what not to do where to go whom to ask uh, these type of situations a confused situation is one of the symptom of panic attack then uh, dizziness and steadiness uh, you feel like uh, you you will be feeling uh, highly uh, thirsty uh, you cannot you are not able to uh, speak uh, you are speechless uh, and uh, like palpitation uh, the heart rate heart rate is high mm, trembling shaking sweating um, your words are not coming out you are not able to speak a nausea stomach ache a nausea feeling of tendency to vomit but you are not vomiting then um, uh, chest pain or discomfort fear of dying all these are some of the symptoms and it is uh, like uh, all symptoms may not um, come together maybe one or two symptoms which may follow for a long time that is more important you have to see and uh, that is highly the particular individual is highly di having difficulty to cope up with the situation okay as i said before if some good happens you are forgetting the uh, previous one isn't it what had happened so that that means you have, uh, you have, have uh, overcome your uh, 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 that the hurdle is removed the obstacle is removed then you are going towards your normal functioning but in certain situations certain people are not able to handle the situation last day only i came uh, with a person um, uh, who has a very good educational background uh, the person uh, was um, uh, like uh, was a principal in one of uh, the school uh, and he was holding a very good position uh, he was uh, very much uh, famous within the crowd out in the society but now the particular client is of 70 uh, maybe 70 years uh, he had got retired and almost 10 years uh, 10 or uh, 12 years okay so uh, but now uh, his wife was, wife was sharing that the person uh, the particular individual is very much frightened to move out of the house he always want to remain inside the house See, this shows that the changes, isn't it? Once the person was not like that, he was very uh, popular, he was very socializing, he was uh, very, uh, but, uh, he had a very good position in the educational field, uh, he was a teacher, then he, he his designation uh, got uh, improved, like uh, he was uh, promoted to uh, the principal status, uh, he had so much of socialization. But now the change is that, that is observed by other people in the family and they say that this, um, uh, and that is what we have to find out why this particular per person is behaving in such a way that he is very much highly um, like he is always he is always like he doesn't want to meet anybody he was always want to remain in a close room and that changes uh, us because some of the difficulty and we have to find out okay and that is what we have to work with. and this can be called as a problem or can be termed as a disorder but the degree may vary how this is how we diagnose it okay yeah, so symptoms will vary as i said uh, this symptom will not come together to a particular individual this may vary from person to person but the, the some common ones are palpitation shortness of breath uh, sweating uh, you are not able to you become speechless sometimes dizziness fear etc mm, treatment is mainly about the exposure therapy 
mainly the therapy termed as exposure therapy here um, uh, the, we are trying uh, to um, uh, help the person to face uh, the situations repeatedly facing the crowd uh, or um, uh, to uh, like you know how to handle the situation um, uh, having uh, giving up a little bit of comfort zone or if uh, like some type of uh, meditation or relaxation therapy all this uh, will bring uh, that person uh, to a little bit a uh, controlled uh, or uh, situation where if any type of uh, um, uh, situation is there the person can handle it properly and this is see it is very easy for all of us uh, to read or explain something about the uh, treatment but it is uh, like working with the individual is naturally a challenging one it is not necessary it is not we cannot say that uh, within once one or six, two sittings uh, or, or sessions um, it is uh, you will get a positive result or 100% result will be achieved um, when you are uh, working with a particular patient okay uh, this may take seven to eight follow-up sessions Eight to nine follow-up sessions. Uh, you may need to have behavior. Uh, you may have to need uh, to have behavior modification uh, therapy, environment modification, modification, um, uh, house visiting, support of uh, the other people, uh, good friends uh, circle. You have to provide good friends circle. All these will uh, only uh, will help that particular person to handle the situation. So uh, uh, you may have to have many sessions with this particular uh, individual. Then only. Uh, the person can cope up with the situation and maybe there can be a chance of relapse also again going back to the same situation so here the supportive uh, system or the, fam uh, the family support is also very important if the particular person is working uh, somewhere then that environment is also very important so all these matters see when we uh, speak something or when we discuss about the symptom or treatment it is uh, seen that okay exposure therapy that can be undertaken easily but it is not it's a challenging one and that is what a challenging role you have to play you have to play a challenging role there should be motivation encouragement all these uh, can only help the person to handle the situation okay so that is very very important from your part and phobic disorders um, there are phobic means as you all know that fear of something isn't it uh, people fear of uh, like they have fear of animal fear of blood uh, fear of height fear of uh, a crowd uh, there are different types of uh, phobias even uh, like a, a new, uh, there's a phobia called nomophobia. Have you heard about nomophobia? Has oh, heard? No, it is uh, being away from your phone. It is being away from the phone. Naturally, we are all uh, like uh, we depend too much on our uh, personal phones, isn't it? Mobile. And sometimes what happens is that um, if uh, for a, for a, a like longer time, like uh, um, if you are attending a session or if you are attending a judicial session or any any you are you are not allowed to use the phone. Sometimes there is a restriction in using the phone, and you are not uh, you are away from that phone. You will have different type of. Uh, uh, like uh, a dizziness sort of thing or uh, sometimes uh, you have no fear that uh, what type of messages have uh, come or has somebody uh, telephone has somebody have uh, phoned uh, you or any messages have been texted to you or that means you are not near the phone and you want to be with the phone okay and that situation uh, that phobia is called nomophobia Yes, and so uh, phobic disorder, there are many uh, different types of phobias, agoraphobia, that is fear of marketplace, uh, where um, you want to, uh, as I said, a uh, situation isn't it, you don't want to uh, be among the crowd, you don't want to, uh, you don't like the crowd, you want to be safe at home, and this, uh, it is naturally a point of time, we all want to, sometimes we need a, our space, a special space, but sometimes this situation uh, persists for for a long term uh, and uh, the person is able to socialize with anybody is, uh, the person is not having a uh, not having any interest or loses interest in uh, interaction that becomes a phobia okay and um, and so uh, treatment is mainly about the exposure therapy or the behavior therapy um, and uh, mainly uh, interaction communication all this will help in uh, overcoming the phobia Okay, uh, then other phobias, uh, uh, also there is social phobia, 
again related to the society, social, this one. Uh, and there are, there are also many different types of phobias. Okay, I'm not getting deeper into that. The next is obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. You might have heard obsessive compulsive disorder, isn't it? OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Here it is characterized by the uh, present, uh, it is uh, like uh, presence of recurrent unwanted intrusive ideas, images or impulses that seem silly, weird uh, or uh, sometimes repeat, doing repeatedly. The same thing is being done repeatedly or uh, the person is very much aware of the cleanliness uh, or uh, uh, somebody, yes, uh, somebody wants to interfere, the person may uh, have a little, uh, may not be interested that other persons are interfering, interfering or uh, once uh, the thing is done, the others, uh, he, the, the, the person may not want others to uh, like uh, handle that situation again or uh, to touch that particular object, okay. And these repeatedly may uh, cause to obsessive compulsive disorder. There are many people uh, suffering from the situation, uh, there may be because of fear, less confidence, low esteem can be the reason of developing this type of disorder. Okay, uh, or many of the instances that might have undergone by that particular individual when he, when the particular child was in uh, childhood uh, or um, uh, some nightmares or some uh, abuses that can also bring to obsession. Okay, there are people uh, who are very much less confident of themselves and if they are at home, what they do, they, they, do, they don't want anybody to use their toilet, they will always like to clean that particular place each and every time uh, and there are also many uh, people um, uh, have come across they, they express that if they go before uh, the sleep uh, they they try to switch off already it is uh, like it is uh, they have switched off all the fans and lights but still the person is in a confusion that the, uh, the switch uh, the switches are not uh, um, like it is not switched off uh, again and the particular person will uh, work on that switching off that fan okay he will always touch that switch uh, that to make it sure that the phone uh, that particular switch uh, is uh, like it is not working out is off that repetition of work if continuous continuously that act is done naturally that particular person is suffering from uh, that particular disorder okay and it is uh, prevalence the occurrence is said it affects about two to three percent of adults and occurs about equally in men and women this is equally in men and women because people with this disorder are afraid that they will be embarrassed or stigmatized and they often perform their ritual secret and this act is done very means others they don't want others to interfere in this even though a ritual may help several hours each day okay that is what that becomes a disorder the same thing is repeated every day and hours and if it takes hours and hours that becomes a disorder okay and um, like here also if uh, the treatment is about exposure therapy uh, and this is a type of exposure therapy it is a type of behavior therapy behavior modification therapy uh, then um, um, uh, psychotherapy uh, talking gaining insight um, showing good role models um, uh, successful models developing the confidence um, overcoming the fear uh, all these can be some of the uh, treatment modes related to obsessive compulsive disorder or obsessive compulsive neurosis or uh, this disorder okay so these are some of the um, uh, disorders uh, related uh, to uh, mainly the disorders uh, uh, psychological disorders and these also it can be classified as neurotic because it is uh, uh, that these disorders can happen to anybody and that is also it is a, a treat, a treatable it can be handled certain situations may help us to handle these situations in a better way okay next is mood disorder the next is mood disorders mood isn't it everybody um, see in a common language or in layman's language we say that oh i'm not having a mood uh, to move towards the market or i'm not having the mood to read uh, this uh, lesson okay naturally in the common uh, layman's people we lose this mood isn't it but if this mood always has a swing or switching to oh, suddenly switching again and again or mood swings are there uh, you are not able to handle the situation in totally in or no, any way and that becomes a mood disorder okay and um, uh, this difficult situations in life bring stress frustration disappointment that you may face in life 
these are some of the symptoms where uh, you can categorize this as mood disorder and sadness and feeling blue feeling uh, blue means you're feeling very sad uh, you don't want to talk to anybody you don't want to if, even if you want to be happy you're not able to become happy if you want to go to, you want to watch a movie you're not able to watch a movie you don't have any mood uh, or if you want to go for a shopping you want to shop but you don't want to go for a shopping okay these situations may bring us some of the uh, things that uh, there's uh, the mood swing is uh, there okay and mood disorders are also called affective disorders and um, like um, it is clearly among the diagnostic and statistical so uh, the two poles of mood, mood disorders are depression and mania the two poles of um, mood disorders are depression and mania depression means you are totally negative in yourself you are not uh, don't want you are you're not you don't want to enjoy any pleasures of life um, uh, feeling intense sadness uh, or uh, any event uh, all uh, these are some of the uh, symptoms of depression okay depression uh, like um, uh, some of the depression may affect one's life in any of the following ways like uh, crying spells lack of emotional responsiveness inability to find uh, like i said pleasure feeling of hopelessness uh, lack of confidence uh, it is you have made sure that you will not be uh, you, like you, you will you will be very uh, sure that uh, uh, you are not going to achieve a good result because once or twice uh, you had got struggled or you didn't get a good outcome so every time we will feel that okay if i do the same thing i'm not going to um, get along with this or i'm not going to go, get the good result and these are some of the things which uh, brings us to a state of depression and depression also there are different degrees of depression uh, mild moderate severe etc so uh, the, these when we speak all these things is a common to each and every human being but once this becomes an uh, 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 imbalance situation or if it goes beyond the control then you begin to term it as a depression okay uh, this is some of the uh, this thing and uh, mania mania is a discrete period lasting a week or more during which a person experiences an abnormally elevated uh, cheerful or euphoric mood mood okay uh, a person experiencing a mania shows persistent and often inappropriate enthusiasm which may involve taking on a new projects okay sometimes a person is highly elevated highly uh, like uh, he is not able to control the pleasures he is not able to control his happiness and that is sometimes shows some little bit of away from the normal and that is called mania okay and also sometimes suddenly their mood may change um, like um, uh, there's a we call it bipolar disorder where the, the, the particular individual may show two types of difficulties. If sometimes a person is normal, sometimes suddenly the person may become abnormal or he may get depressed or may, he may shout or he may become restless. So there is a different changes in the mood and that is termed as bipolar disorder. So, um, 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 like you know, um, classification of mood disorders, that is this disorder is characterized by repeated episodes in which patients mood and activity levels are significantly disturbed the one thing is that uh, every time we have to remember that uh, the degree varies okay each and every time uh, ee and see each and every human being has these types of mood variations but if it persists or if it get, goes long for a long period then only it can be termed as um, mood disorder and uh, characteristic uh, uh, under the mood disorder there's a classification unipolar and bipolar that is what i told you just before bipolar disorder okay mm -hmm. unipolar disorders are characterized by depressive symptoms uh, in the absence of uh, pathological elevated mood okay um, so in bipolar it is a mixed reaction of depression and mania okay generally and uh, there's a high rate of bipolar disorder uh, i don't know exactly uh, the rate of prevalence but uh, there's a high rate and it is uh, uh, like it is not uh, necessary that it affects the men only or it affects the women only it is common to men and women uh, ma'am rohit this slide i'm really sorry i was on mute uh, yeah. I didn't unmute myself. Uh, my, uh, my, uh, I just had one question, one thought. Uh, when we talk about anxiety or uh, certain kind of uh, mood change or mood swings, 
does it relate to when one person uh, tries to control the outcome and the outcome is not according to that person uh, mm-hmm. would that kick in anxiety would that be one of the factors kicking in exi- uh, anxiety in the person <laughs> see uh, yeah we cannot uh, like and see um, this uh, the changes in a particular individual has to be observed regularly okay uh, then only we can term it as it is anxiety or uh, it is a mood disorder uh, that depends upon the situation during which situation that particular that uh, that is to be interacted properly with that particular client or uh, the persons related with that particular client at what point of time the particular person is uh, performing such act or uh, showing a little uh, showing highly uh, is highly disturbed or highly restlessness the situations may also uh, um, um, situation also there is a certain situations where we can point out that okay this person particular person during this point of time the particular person is having difficulty and so that is why the particular particular person is performing and so this can be a situation where it is not uh, pleasant and there can be that that can be termed as anxiety okay understand regular interaction and regular observation is also very important that is what okay. i said all of this very important right understood thank you sir so uh, here some of uh, i have covered little bit of general uh, general uh, disorders where we like uh, you can come across uh, certain people uh, where you can also provide help or you can refer the situations uh, okay so these are these are, these are some of the disorders and yeah majorly when we move to the treatment isn't it uh, we know the difficult the situation has been diagnosed so okay, the next part is treatment uh, so uh, the treatment includes pharma uh, there are many therapies uh, instead of medication the we use term as pharmacotherapy giving uh, medi- medicines some medicines antidepressants uh, then antipsychotics ECT, uh, you might be aware of what is ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Sometimes the situation is a little bit difficult to handle or uh, the person is very highly uh, disturbance, disturbed or uh, in a condition that uh, he cannot recollect any of the things, totally disoriented, those persons may be given ECT. I think it is uh, not usually used, but in certain conditions where uh, the psychiatrist uh, um, decides that, okay, there's a need of this electroconvulsive conversive uh, therapy uh, they um, they provide the particular patient with this therapy ect that is for ect then other psychosocial social treatment includes uh, like psychiatric management and supportive psychotherapy uh, supportive management supportive system is very very important then um, psychotherapy with different therapies like rational emotive therapy um, unnecessary fear and uh, unnecessary th- thoughts uh, may be controlled by rational emotive therapy but these needs uh, many follow ups and uh, many sessions uh, cognitive therapy uh, also helps to change the perception of that particular individual what he has connected with the thing or what already has been set in his mind that has to be a little bit slowly uh, wanted to change okay and this will help through cognitive therapy group therapy is also very important group therapy is also a good working therapy because when there's a group uh, when there's a similar homogeneous group Uh, facing each and every member has certain same difficulties and one once shared the difficulty the other the other person thinks that okay i too have the same difficulty but that person has tried to cope up the situation why can't i and that may help to have a bring a change and uh, support from the social uh, the counselor naturally will up- enhance the situation into a better place better uh, condition okay so group therapy is a very good therapy uh, then interpersonal therapy to know more about that particular individual um, uh, to have more interaction okay and good role models modeling learning therapies all this will help to overcome the uh, situation behavior therapy is also good uh, like uh, can be helpful but these therapies and actually regular follow up with little uh, spa, um, like um, within uh, one or two week it is it should not uh, like regular therapy once the person comes under control there should be a continuous um, support of these therapies if it is given naturally the person can be under control and uh, uh, he can help himself to uh, handle uh, cope up with the situation and these are some of the techniques where 
as a counselor or as a therapist we can provide and yesterday as i said that here we have uh, like we are it is uh, not that we don't have that hard and fast rule that you cannot use the therapy but in certain other countries you have to have a license uh, to um, uh, perform the therapies, you are not supposed to perform the therapy as and when needed. Uh, so uh, there, you need to have a license. You should be licensing order of this particular therapies. But here in our country, I think it is not that we don't have that heart and fast rule. So some behavior modification therapy, exposure therapy um, uh, can be used. Um, uh, we can uh, uh, we can help the person with these uh, therapies. Okay, the person who is suffering from any other psychiatric uh, situation. Uh, or uh, you can help uh, like behavior modification therapy you can um, uh, or environment modification therapy you can help the person to have a better environment away from all those difficult situations slowly and steadily uh, with different follow-ups um, the person will get along with the situation and he can handle the situation so all these are related to some of the help what um, what uh, we as a counselors can provide uh, to these particular situations and, and here the theoretical aspect i think uh, some of the situations some of the symptoms some of the difficult uh, some of the uh, problems we have come across uh, about uh, the disorders which are under the classification of icd and dsm and uh, uh, um, and thorough reading and updation of the knowledge will, will uh, give you more uh, learnings okay so that you should be always involved and in, in, uh, we will see in the afternoon session, it is at 2, um, about the severe uh, mental disorders, some of the severe mental disorders uh, that we will look into. Okay. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Um, bipolar disorder person can we get any insight? Hmm. How can we give him, him the insight of this disorder? Can you explain, um, ma'am? Yeah, in certain situations, the person uh, bipolar means is a mixture of depression and mania, isn't it? In certain cases, uh, in certain point of time, uh, the uh, per the patient, the particular individual uh, may be in a normal condition and they will not understand whether this person is having some type of disorder. Suddenly, the mood changes. Okay, suddenly uh, the, there is a change. So here, uh, to control the situation, first medication is important because sometimes only the particular person may have difficulty. Okay. Sometimes a person may lose the insight, sometimes a person is okay and depends upon the degree of the difficulty also. Okay, so uh, first if, uh, the, if uh, the degree is severe, it is better to give some medic medicines, then there is a control of uh, the, the particular situation and then uh, we can help. And so naturally there will be insight, there you can develop insight. You cannot say that every time the person will be disoriented. You cannot say that every time the person will be disoriented. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's not the difficulty with bipolar. You cannot um, uh, just at the look of a person, you cannot say that this person is bipolar because uh, normal situation, he will be acting normal. Suddenly, there's a swing in his mood. That is a difficulty. Yeah, well, thank you so much.